This is one of my favorite tools to use. I actually use this in my college classroom um, at every meeting and we've continued using it through our online learning. So this is something we've used in a face-to-face -face format um, as well as in our online format when we meet live with video conference tools. So I hope you'll like it too. It's very similar to Nearpod if you're, um, if you're familiar with that, um, but it, um, it integrates very easily into um, Google Slides. So I hope you'll like it too. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start our class. Um, if you are still trying to get logged in, you're gonna find the code is going to stay up in the top right-hand corner. So once you go to joinpd.com, you can still find that code in the top right corner of my shared screen. So thank you for joining us today for Early Literacy and Online Learning, Designing Explicit Instruction in an Online Environment. So I'm Dr. Lauren Brannon, as Dr. Hulon introduced. I'm an assistant professor of reading education. However, I am a former first grade teacher. So I've spent several years in first grade. Um, I also spent some time in third grade and kindergarten. I'm also a former technology teacher. I did that at J.E. Turner Elementary. So hello to those of you who used to teach with me at J.E. Turner. Um, currently, along with teaching, um, literacy courses in our undergraduate and graduate programs. I am the program coordinator for our largest program, the K-6 teacher education program, as well as our graduate elementary education programs, including the traditional masters, the alternative masters, and the educational specialist um, programs. So if you guys have any questions about those graduate programs, um, I'm happy to talk with you about that. Uh, I'll give you my email at the end of the session. Um, so we can, you can get in contact with me. We are beginning this summer, our one year option in that um, traditional master's program for elementary education, as well as early childhood education. So if you've been thinking about a graduate degree, I can help you with that. So here's our first interactive activity. So to what degree are you creating your own content for your online courses? So you should have access when you hover your mouse over the top of the screen, you should be able to um, place your little flag on the continuum. So go ahead and add your flag to the continuum. Are you mostly using other people's content or are you mostly using your own content? So put it where you think it fits. Let's take a look at what we have. So I'm gonna click show responses. So you guys may be able to see that on my shared screen. Okay, wow, look at all those flags. Okay, so it looks like we are kind of all across the board. Some of us are at this point just trying to survive and we're using the other content. Some of us are kind of a mix. We're using other people's content along with adding our own content. And then some of you rock stars out there are only using your own content. So that's amazing. Um, so I hope that today you'll be able to add to your toolbox for teaching online. So our agenda for today um, is first to talk about what research says about teaching reading. I feel like it's very important for us to ground what we're trying to do in the research on teaching. Then we're gonna look at some tools for modeling and some tools for um, guided practice as well as for um, some interactive individual practice. Our learning goals for this session are to describe the research regarding how reading should be taught in K through third grade um, and apply the research to technologies that can support literacy teaching in K through third grade. So let's talk about what research says about teaching reading. Um, I, I didn't wanna go through each of the five components, so we're gonna look mainly at the research for direct and explicit instruction. If you're a member from your Alabama Reading Initiative training um, or from any training on literacy, really, it talks about explicit direct instruction and how important that is. So effective literacy teachers directly and explicitly teach students what they need to know. And this is supported by decades of research. 
So in the 1970s, Rose and Sean reviewed research on effective um, instruction. In 1986, he and Stevens provided the following functions for teaching well-structured uh, subjects such as literacy. So these are some of those steps. Review the previously learned material, present the new material through modeling, demonstration, and providing examples. Provide guided practice. That's the practice that we do together. Provide correction and specific feedback. Provide in independent practice with some super, uh, teacher supervision where possible. And then review weekly and monthly. Cycle back and review what we've learned so that we can build on that. So back in 1983, Pearson and Gallagher um, published an article about teaching comprehension. And so this was the first time we really saw the um, gradual release of responsibility model. And so this is that original model that they published. And you can see here in this middle box that where that gradual release of responsibility occurs, we start with modeling and we end up with um, the students applying the skill independently. This has been refined more recently uh, by Fisher and Frey, and this is probably a more familiar model to you. So th they added the collaborative component in there to keep students from only working independently for most of the time. So again, we begin with that focus lesson, that I do component. Then we move to guided instruction where we do it together. And that can be guided with mostly teacher with a little bit of student input, but it also could be guided where mostly students are doing the work, but the teacher's there for guidance as needed. We also have um, collaborative, where the students are working together to practice. And then finally, students practice independently, where they practice it alone. So today, as we talk about the tools, we're gonna keep this model in mind and think about where these tools might fit because we don't wanna leave out any of these components. Um, we don't want to only assign independent work because it's important for our students to hear from us and see models and examples. So here's your next interactive activity. So you, it'll give you some experience with Pear Deck. So you're gonna use the draw um, option you can actually add text as well and i want you to use the, the parts in your word bank and add this to the chart here so the focus lesson is which part is it i do you do it alone we do it or you do it together go ahead and label yours And again, you'll, you'll add your responses through the, the device or the window that you use to sign into Pear Deck. You, you can't um, edit the screen that I'm sharing. So let's take a look at what responses we have. So this is what it would look like if you were using Pear Deck with your students um, live. So we can show the responses. And so we're going to see several screens available. Okay, so here you see someone use the typing tool to go ahead and start labeling. So this is a good way for me to check in with my students to see if they've understood. All right, and then we've used, we've used the line tool to draw a line. So that's clever. All right, and then we see we've used the, the um, drawing tool to just draw all the words into the boxes. So that might look several different ways, okay? Looks like a lot of us use the, um, the text tool and the drawing tool here. All right. So again, with the focus lesson, it's I do. With guided instruction, we do. Collaborative, you do it together, and then independently, you do it alone. So now let's take what we've learned or what we've reviewed um, about literacy instruction or explicit literacy instruction and talk about how we can make this work for us in tools. I've seen so many times in education that we kind of put technology at the forefront and expect it to make the change for our students. But 
Dr. Richard Clark, several years ago, wrote an article called Media Will Never Influence Learning. And in that, he argued that technology is not what does the teaching. Technology is just the vehicle that we use to deliver the instruction. So what's important is the, the instructional strategies that we use. So we want the tools to work for us, and we don't want to try to plan ourselves around the tools. Um, I have a little note in here. If you'll just please review your district's guidelines for the use of digital tools before you choose to implement any of the tools that we talk about today. Um, I know specifically um, of one example in Mobile County, they're not using Zoom because of some security issues. They're using WebEx. So just make sure that you check through um, all of these tools to make sure that it's okay that you use them in your district. So here are some tools for modeling. You're gonna see me switch back and forth a lot here. So I, I'm going to share my iPad screen. So I'm gonna to have to go back and forth a little um, between my um, screen here and my iPad screen. Um, so first we'll look at some recordable apps, um, a what, recordable whiteboard app. So these actually record your voice and what you're writing or typing as you, as you type or write and then you can save these and sometimes some of these tools will let you save the vehicle uh, the video in their own database and you just share their link or you can actually download the video and from the drive account or you can upload it to youtube to share so we'll take a look at several examples here um, as we change over uh, dr hulon do we have any questions that we need to talk about I don't think we have any specific questions. I, I think we were just all getting to Pear Deck and we have those taken <laughs> care of. So okay, awesome. I think we're good right now. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so you should be able to see my iPad screen now. Demonstrate a few of these. The first one I had on my list was Edu Creations. And so this is the one um, I think that most people are probably familiar with um, and it's I believe it's free I'll have to look on my um, on my chart for that and before I get into this we only have a very short time together today we only have an hour um, limit for our meeting so I cannot go into extreme detail on um, any of these tools but at the end of the meeting you're going to get a link to a document that's going to have a chart with each of the tools that I go over it's going to tell you which devices it's, uh, they're available for, what to use the tool for, and I've even linked several um, tutorials for you in that chart. So you're gonna get that as a resource when you leave today. So if you still have questions about the tools, I'm hoping that this will be able to help you. So let's take a look at Edu Creations. So this is the first um, whiteboard, recordable whiteboard app. And it, this one's available on your Apple device. So it's kind of limited. You can also do it from your, um, your browser in your computer. So I'm gonna use this plus sign right here to begin a new lesson. So you can see I have a blank whiteboard. You have a drawing tool here at the top and you also have an eraser tool. With my drawing tool, I can choose whichever color I'd like to use for my pen. And then I can actually just draw directly on the screen. You can change colors. Okay, you can also go, go over here to this little plus sign and add text. You can add pictures or even take a picture with your iPad. And then if you have the, um, the pro version of education, you should have some other options here. Um, so let's look at the text one because I feel like this is important, especially for those of us who are teaching early literacy. Um, because we need to be able to have that type text for them. So you can type text on your screen. You cannot change the font type yet with this app. app. So I feel like that's a limitation here, um, but it is a nice option to have. So say I've put my lesson together here. Now, if I, I have this page ready, I can go ahead and record the audio for this lesson by clicking on the microphone. So I'll just do that. This is the word cat. And then I pause. And then I can play back my audio. All right, 
so then we can also edit that, trim it or delete it altogether. And then we can add a next, um, next page. So if you look down here in the corner, it's kind of hidden you can click this little arrow and add a new blank page. So of course, if your lesson has multiple parts to it, you probably need multiple pages. Um, so that, uh, that keeps you from having to erase over and over and record over and over. All right, so once you are finished, then you will want to share. So we can come up here to our share button and we can save our finished video. And so they will actually give, we'll have to title it, let's just do this sample, but they will generate a link for you. All right, so here we are. <laughs> All right, so, and then we can share our video and you can send it, you can save it to your, um, um, your photos app, or you can send it however you want to send it um, to your classroom. So that's EduCreations, it's a pretty simple one. Another one that I'm not gonna really go into a lot of detail with is very similar to EduCreations and it's called Show Me, but it has some of the very same features. So I'm just gonna click a new Show Me. Again, you can add text, but um, you cannot change the, the font. You can make your text larger or smaller or change the color using your color tools. You also have the drawing tools over here and you can choose your pen size. Or your color. And just like Edge Creations, you can click the record and as you record, it's going to, going to record your video, the things that you're writing at the same time as it's recording the audio. So this is another tool, a really neat way to um, record some quick video lessons for your students. What's nice about these is that our students get to hear our voice. They're not listening to a teacher that they're not familiar with. And for our little babies, I feel like that is so important that they feel that connection to us. Um, so these are videos that are custom made for them and who knows their needs better than we do. So that's Show Me. The next one I would like to show you is my favorite, and this is Explain Everything. When Explain Everything first came out, you just paid for the app, but now they are trying to do the subscription service, but they've also added lots of other features um, that makes it more interactive. But I am just happy with the basic feature, um, which is just to create some interactive um, video lectures. So just like the others, you can click New, um, and you can see some other samples that I've done here in the recent projects area. So I'm going to click new and you can choose which canvas type you would like to start with. That's just the background. I'm going to start with a blank canvas. All right, so here's our background. If you click this top tool right here, this is one of the most useful tools. I feel um, you can select. You can take a picture or add a video add a browser, an equation, or even audio to your white, your blackboard. You can also add files or clip art. You can even search for photos. So if I needed a picture of a cat to demonstrate the middle, um, the short A sound as the middle of a word, I can find a picture of a cat and add it to my background. And then I can resize it and move it wherever I would like. Um, so you have some other options on here as well. I found that the best thing for some of these apps is just to really play around with them before you decide to go and record. You also have a pen tool, just like the other ones, but this one's a little more detailed. Um, you can choose your pen type. You have this little marker type um, pen and we can change our colors. So it's very just solid. You can also choose the pencil option and how shaded you want it. And so you can shade using your pencil. Now I should tell you I am using an Apple pencil on this, but you could certainly do this with your finger as well, just like you would um, regularly with a, uh, with a tablet. All right, then we have our marker tool or our highlighter tool. So if I needed to highlight some text, I could do that there. 
That might be neat if you need your kids to look at a certain spot on the whiteboard or blackboard to highlight that text. We also have the eraser tool. I like this option because it lets you erase the pictures. So you can erase the parts you don't need in the picture. How cool is that? You also have this fill tool. So what I'm gonna do is grab my marker really quickly and make a circle, a closed shape. Let's change this to the marker. Make a closed shape. And I'm gonna use this fill, this little bucket. It dumps the paint color in there. So we're gonna choose the color we want and fill that color. You can also add shapes choose some shapes that you would like to add. This one, this is my favorite component of this app. This is why I would use this one before others um, is because of the, its text. Um, let me add a new page here just to show you this one. So we're gonna do the text. I'm gonna just click on my screen after I use that tool. This one lets you choose your font. Again, like I said, this is so important for our young babies. We definitely wouldn't want to use that cursive writing, but we could you you can actually download fonts to your iPad or to your device. I'm working on an iPad right now. And I downloaded a font called Block Letters. And look at what font this uses. So this is the closest thing I've been able to find to Danilian font. So if you are teaching Danilian as part of your handwriting program and your phonics program, then this is a great tool to use. Um, and so I can show you how I did that um, in just a few minutes. So I added a custom font here. So I think that's just a great feature of um, this one. So if I want to delete, I can click the X here and then click on that and then just delete it. And that saves me the time of having to erase. Just like the other apps, we have the recording feature here. And so when I click record, it's going to record anything I say and anything I write. And just like the other apps, you can go in and edit that information. But we won't, um, we won't do that today. You will see that in the, um, in the tutorial I gave you in a handout. So then we would want to share it. So we just export it as a video and save it saves to the um, the device, your iPad or whatever you've created it on. And then you can upload it to YouTube or directly into Google Classroom, or you could get the link from um, Google Drive. All right, so that's to explain everything. Another one that I have is Dosery. So this one's used for several other things, but we're gonna just choose the from my iPad only. This is this actually lets you connect to other computers but it is a really helpful screen recording. So I'm gonna use my plus sign down here at the bottom left-hand side, and just my default iPad side. So again, we have our whiteboard. You can add um, images. You can choose the type of background that you want. Then you can have different types of pins. Let's try this one. You can adjust the sizes and the spacing. Look at all of these different options. That's spray paint and highlighters. And then we have some shapes in, in there that you can add. All right, so you can customize your tools here. Um, and then your windshield wiper here will erase everything on your, your screen. Then you would share and just export um, your video after um, you would record. So you have your record tool up here at the top. Whoa, I didn't like the arrow. All right, so that's Dosery. Again, you're gonna get a handout that lists all of these tools. Um, it gives you access. So something that I recently learned is if, if you're working on an iPad, you are able to record your screen. So if you pull down your tools here, you can use this little record button at the very bottom. It looks like um, it's a circle around a dot and you can record the audio and the video of your screen. Um, I'm not gonna do that now, but here's where that comes in. So if you are already familiar with Smart Notebook from using a um, Smart Board in your classroom, you can get the Smart Board um, app, the Smart Notebook app, and create a new file. 
And then you have all of these basic tools here at the bottom that you're already familiar with. Okay, you can type, you can add your shapes, you can add pictures. It doesn't have the gallery on it, but it does have lots of other tools. So you could use your iPad screen recording tool to help you record using Smart Notebook if that's something you're more comfortable doing. And then you can, of course, save this, but you would want to save the video recording of that, um, of that lesson. All right, so see this iFont app right here? It's blue. This is what I used to download a font to my iPad. Okay, so you can go to Font Finder and you can add in different free font websites to download your um, font. So I think I used Font Freak to find the block letters. So that was when I had to actually add and to add websites, you just use the plus sign right there. Um, so you can use that to download that um, font and install them on your iPad um, so that you can have some different fonts in your apps. So let me hop back over to the um, my computer screen. So um, Stephanie, do we have any questions? We do, Dr. Brandon. We have a few questions from the chat window. I think you answered one about the creations being stored in an online cloud or your device. I heard you mention that on the last app. Um, do you know about the other apps, if they're stored on the device or are they stored in a cloud? Okay, so um, explain everything can be, but I think that comes with the subscription. When I've used it, I've just saved it as a video and then added it to Google Drive and created the link from there to share. Show me, um, I think we'll let you download and it saves it to the cloud. Uh, Educreations is to the cloud and I believe Dosery um, saves the video as well. Great, thank you. Do you know about the apps that you've shared as far as them importing or I guess linking with Google Classroom or would they just need to take the file that the app created and then upload that um, like to their Google Drive and then then link it to Google Classroom or does it directly link with Google Classroom? Um, I haven't seen in any of these um, it's not to say it's pos it's not possible. I honestly I do not have access to Google Classroom to test this out but I have not seen where you can directly link to Google Classroom, but it's probably possible with some of these apps. Um, what I would do if you had to download the video would be upload it to YouTube and then get the share link from there and put that in Google Classroom, or I would just save it to my Google Drive and um, get the share link from there and put it in Google Classroom. Great, thank I'm, you. I'm, Okay. Yeah, I'm not well versed enough in Google Classroom. I have seen the demonstrations of it, but I, I, I haven't used it enough to be able to give much advice on that part. Thank you. I think that's all the questions we have so far in the chat window. Okay. All right, so I'm hopping back over to um, our presentation. So these are the different apps that I went over. Again, you'll get a handout that lists these and along with some tutorials of how to use them. Um, so now let's look at some tools for the guided practice, the we do part. I think this is the part that really gets tricky when we are in an online environment. Um, but there are some ways around this. But I also feel like this is one of the most important parts um, of teaching literacy is when we have that, that guidance. Um, so the first part I'll talk about um, I'm, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit on the presentation, is using your video conference tool. So many of you are using Zoom or you're using WebEx or Google Meet. So if you're meeting with a small group of students or with an individual student or even with your whole class, you can help give some guided practice during, during that time. You can use the Pear Deck app, the one that we're using today in our presentation, um, or you can use Nearpod. Um, and you would do both of those with the teacher-led um, lesson. We wouldn't want to do the student-led lesson. That would be more of an independent activity. Um, so let me, um, well, let's see. For time-wise, I think we might skip ahead a little bit because we're going to see these examples again. Um, but I do want to talk about Class Kit. 
So this is one that I've recently learned about, but it is really cool. So I'm going to hop over here um, to my tab. So I've logged in to Class Kick, and this is a really good guided practice um, app or um, program. It has the, you can use it on the um, browser on your computer, but you can also download the app onto your tablet or your phone. Um, so it really it gives kids access. You don't really have to worry about having a certain device to use this one. Um, so this, a lot of people have wondered, how do I, you know, give my worksheets or how do I give practice and monitor the practice? So this is a good way to do this. So I'm going to use my green plus sign here. And I'm going to do just a new blank assignment. And let's just name it sample. All right, so here's my first page. And you can see you can add other pages to your assignment. Um, you could also delete pages if you only want one page. When we're working with young kids, we want to keep it simple. So it might be nice just to have one page um, per assignment that you're giving them, just to cut down on having to navigate through multiple pages and tools. Um, so let's look at, we're going to click on the first slide, slide one. So here's where it gets really cool. You have all of these tools and you have your blank sheet of paper. You can add a background color if you'd like. Um, you have a pencil tool for drawing. We can highlight, erase. You can add text. So we have to click where we want our text box to go. You have a line tool and it's giving me the little tutorial here. Okay, um, then you can add links, you can add pictures, you can add your voice for audio. And this is where I think it, it's really interesting because our babies, a lot of them cannot read the instructions. And so you can record the instructions as an audio file and add that into your page here. These are the instructions. So I'm stopping, I'm gonna save it, and we'll see what happens. All right, so when my, my child gets to the page, they can just click here. And so you have your audio instructions here. Um, let's see, Ooh, you can add images and things here, some interactive tools. Um, you, can, you have bullets, or excuse me, multiple choice options. So it makes it a little more interactive. But here's the part I really want to show you. So I know um, in Mobile County, they've been using the Ready Reading and Ready Math pages. And I've seen people use those a lot with Nearpod, but you could also use them with Class Kit. So let's add a picture. I'm going to add an image from my computer. I think I have it saved on my desktop. And this is just a screenshot of a reading worksheet. But I can add the whole worksheet, or I can just add one question and spread things out. Okay, so this is what it would look like. You can add to the question. Um, you can add another question to this page. So we're just going to keep it as question one and finish. All right, so here's my question, and I can move it wherever. I can make it larger, and this will help you spread out the questions for those young babies who might be overwhelmed when they see a lot of questions on one page. So you could do one per page or just a couple per page, whatever um, is best for you. So let's say this is my assignment, and I'm finished. So I'm going to go back. I think I have some tools in my way here. Let's see. Okay, so here's this. Um, where do we finish it? Okay, so we want to assign it. Okay, and so you can do this with um, you know, add your roster. Let's just do a sample class. Okay, and so here's my class code.
All right, let's look. So if they have this, they're going to put this code in. Let's see, and you can just give them the link and you can see here it goes right into Google Classroom. So that's one of those plus points here. So we can copy the link and add it to Google Classroom. But I'm going to copy this link and I'm going to add a new tab in my browser here. And I'm signing in. And here is my page. Okay, you can see I kept it simple for our example. So as a child, I can use my pencil tool to circle something. I can highlight something. I can even add text. So if I click the T and then click in the blank, I can write in my answer here. They can even um, add a link to something. They can take a picture or they can add audio. So if they need to answer orally to tell you how many sounds they heard in the word cat, or if they need to read a list of words for you, they can use the microphone tool to record themselves. Now on the teacher side, let me move my tools out of the way again, I'm working on a small screen here today. So here's my teacher side. You can see over here, we have Lauren logged in and I can click to view what she's doing live. So as I edit, as a student, you can see the students doing the working at the same time. And you can go and add um, feedback. Now I clicked on the star here, so you can add stickers. So you can assign stickers to be specific feedback. So you can edit what the feedback is going to say. But if I want to add this feedback, to my student here, and I can just put it here at the top of the page. And there, so there's their sticker and there's their feedback. And I don't think, it doesn't let us add audio feedback yet. Um, so that's one thing I feel like is missing from this for us working with younger kids, but these, this is nice. So go back on the front side, I see automatically live the, the, um, the feedback that my teacher gave me. So you could actually type back and forth. So when, while you're giving feedback, you could type a message. So I've typed a message, good job. Let's go back over to the student side. And you can see right here where I added that feedback. So I feel like this is a really good um, tool for being able to give immediate and specific feedback to our students. But it also has several tools that will be useful to our young babies that we're working with in literacy. Um, so that is class kick. Do we have any questions, Stephanie? I don't think we have any questions. We just have some people who have said that they liked um, that tool. Okay, great. Um, it was fun to play around with, um, just trying to discover know what's out there but I think this is a tool that it, there are not many others like it so I think that was um, a really cool tool All right, so let's move on we have about 15 minutes or so left let's look at some tools for independent practice so when the students are trying to practice independently so I wanted to show you some um, how to use Google slides so some of the tools we already have access to can become interactive so this is one that I created um, for a drag and drop activity. So if I want my students to sort words with short A, I can have them drag their raindrops to where they belong. All right. And then they can, they won't have to submit because Google Slides automatically saves everything. So they would just need to go back to their Google Classroom page and click submit once they're done. Um, before I go through the how-to part of this, I want to make sure to tell you when you're sharing this, when you're developing the link to share with your students, make sure that it, you chose the option that says can edit. Because if you only have can view, then the students are not gonna be able to move or change anything on the screen. So make sure it says can edit. 
Now, let me show you how I made this background where the kids can't accidentally grab it and drag it. Those of us who've used computers with one, young students before, you have seen you know, them drag stuff all over the place and we didn't anticipate that. So here's, here's my original. I actually created this background with tools from um, Google, from Google Slides. So I actually used a shape. I entered a shape using the shape tool and I changed it to the green color using my bucket to create the graph. And then I used the shape tool for each of these as well. Any of the shapes that you add, you can click on and you can automatically add text to them without having to add the text box. Now, if I put the raindrops directly on here using my little raindrop um, shape right here, my students would be dragging clouds all over the place. They would be erasing my text here. And you can only imagine the nightmare that would ensue there. Um, so what we want to do is take a picture of this screen. So if you're using a Windows computer, you can use your snipping tool. I hope you become familiar with that because it can be your best friend. But if you're using a Mac, you can use the control, uh, excuse me, the command shift four. And we can select our picture and it's gonna save it. You can see it just popped up on my, de well, it popped up on my desktop um, as a screenshot. And so let's say I'm adding a, a new, let's say we're starting brand new. So I'm gonna add a new slide. I'm going to change this to a blank slide. And that's in the little layout section. Now, let's, we're going to add a background. So instead of just adding a picture that they can move the whole picture around, we want to put this as the background so they can't move it. All right, so you have several options here. You can upload stuff from your computer, add it from your camera, from a link, from Google Drive, or you can do a Google image search, which is very convenient. Um, but for this one, I'm going to upload the picture that I just created. And here's my screen, oops, wrong screenshot. Go back to the top. So here's my shot I just created. And we're gonna add it as the background. And click done. So now students cannot move it. And then I just need to add the images or shapes that you want kids to drag and drop. And so that's how you create a drag and drop in Google Slides. We have questions on that part. We did have a few questions from the chat window, Dr. Brannon. Okay. Let's see. How can you link the word to the picture without the word moving when the students try to drag the picture? <sighs> okay, so that would be the tricky part. I'm thinking to do that, um, you would have to take a picture of it and just drag it in here. I, let me check this out. Let me see if we can group this. I selected that. Rotate. Okay, so it doesn't look like you can group the text. So that is a tricky part. So one way to do this would be just to add pictures of stuff with the words instead of creating a shape with the words if you're worried about your kids changing the words on the screen. Okay, we had some other questions. Um, let's see. Where is the snipping tool for Google Slides located? Okay, so the snipping tool is not located in, in Google Slides. If you're working on um, a Windows machine, which I can't demonstrate for you because I'm not on a, Google, a Windows machine, if you go down to the little home area in the bottom left-hand corner, where you can search for programs or tools, you can type in snipping tool and it will pop up. So it's actually part of your computer program, not part of Google Slides. I need to add that to my tutorial page, I think. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing. Let's see. I think that's all the questions. I, I did want to add um, to the question about grouping. For some reason, the grouping option didn't come up when you right click. So it may have been the text or the image, but generally there is a grouping. Um, I think I know why, Stephanie. Let me okay. try this. Okay. So let, me, let me just test something out in front of you guys. So bear with me. So I'm going to add my little shape. Okay. And I'm going to change the color. Let's just do blue. 
Now, instead of double clicking and typing, I'm going to add a text box on top of it. And now, when I click it, I should be able to group. <gasps> and it worked. Thank you, Stephanie. So now, Great. Uh -oh, they can't, yeah, it's still, oh, they still can do it. It didn't group, I think. Let's see. Let me try this again. Okay, they are grouped, but it's still letting it move. So it's still tricky. See, they could grab just the text box there. So, yep, I think we're still gonna run into that same problem. Is there another, you're, you're my Google certified person, Stephanie, is there another workaround that you know of? I don't know of another workaround than just grouping them uh, together, but we might could investigate that. If we find an answer, we'll send it out with our follow-up email with the screen recording. Uh, we did have another question. This is a good question. Um, can you make it self-checking? I'm not that I know of. This is one that the teacher would have to go back and lay eyes on. So this is not like a Google form where it automatically you can select the correct answer or not. This is really us just manipulating objects on a slide. So it doesn't really check itself. I wish it did that though. So we're still kind of limited by our technologies. I think um, Google Forms is a great tool for that. Yes. All right. Okay, I think that's over it. Here. Oh, go ahead. Okay. I think, I think um, so we did. It. We did the drag and drop with Google Slides. Now I want to show you how to create a handout in Google Slides with Pear Deck. And again, I have a, a tutorial for this because there's several, um, there's several different options for this. So let me show you how to do this. So this is gonna be a student paced Pear Deck. So it's not live like we're using now. All right, let me go back over here to my folder. And I'm just gonna create a new Google Slides file. All right, so we're just going to use the same little worksheet that we looked at with class kick just to keep things simple, but it, th these are very similar the way this will work. All right, where did my toolbar go? Okay, there we go. So let's, we're going to change the size of our paper here or of our slide. I want this to be the same size as a sheet of copy paper. Like if I were going to print out a worksheet, I want it to be this size. So I'm going to click our file and go to page setup and go to custom. And we're going to do our regular eight and a half by 11. All right. And then we're going to add our worksheet as the background, similar to what we did in our last activity so that the students can't move it. Okay, so here we have our worksheet and it's not, um, distorted or anything because it fits perfect. Um, now, how are my students going to edit this? One way would be to have, to have them add text boxes to every single one of these as they're trying to complete it, which if you've tried that these past weeks, you've noticed that that's probably not the best answer. Um, I think I struggled with my nine-year-old for about an hour on that, um, so that was not fun. So let's see how we can use Pear Deck to help us with that. So I'm going to go to add-on. If you don't have the Pear Deck add-on, you're going to click get add-on. And then you would install the Pear Deck add-on. If it's not showing up here at the top, you can go to search and just type in Pear Deck and then you'll find it. I already have it installed. So I'm going to go back and just open it. So I'm going to go to Pear Deck for Google Slides and open it. I'm going to see how you open up over here on the side. So to make this interactive, and this is similar to the gradual release activity you guys did where you had to label, you can use the draw tool. So basically I'm converting this slide to an interactive question. 
And down here at the bottom, you can see the little gray band. Please don't remove that. Um, the kids, I don't think are gonna see that part, but this just um, is what makes it interactive. So let's see what this looks like from the student side. So I'm gonna do a student paste version. So I'm gonna go to start lesson from my toolbar and go to student paste. Okay, and here is where it gets cool. You can copy the link or you can share directly to Google Classroom. But if you're using something like a, a group in Facebook for your uh, learning management system right now, or if you're using Edmodo or something else, you just wanna copy the link. So we're gonna copy the link and I'm gonna open it up in a new tab to show you what it looks like. So this is the student paste version. So here's our worksheet and I can draw if I need to, but I think what we're gonna want our students to do right here is just click text. So they can click the T and then click in the box where they want to type and then answer the question. So that makes it easier than trying to get them to draw the text boxes themselves over and over. So now that I have selected the text tool, it stays selected, so I just, click each part where I need to write my answer and I can automatically type in it. And then I'm done. And see, there's no extra pages, so we wouldn't need to go to another page because this is just one worksheet page. Dr. Brandon, we had a question from the chat window. Will the students need to add the Pear Deck add-on in order to complete the form? No, they do not. All they need is the link that you send them. Or if you're doing a live version, like I'm doing with you guys today with this, um, this presentation, um, you just go have them go, use their device to go to joinpd.com and then they enter the code that's on the screen. So no, there is no app that makes it much easier. Great, thank you. Okay, let's see, I've got to close some of these. Okay, so that was how to edit a handout with Google Slides and Pear Deck. Actually, there's one more thing I wanna show you on here. I'm gonna add a blank page. So these are just some of the bells and whistles that come with Pear Deck. And right now they have their full version for free because of um, the virus. But so you can go to their template library and they have things that you can add for the beginning of your lesson or during the lesson. So let's just take a look. So here's one, is this statement true or false? So, and this is a multiple choice slide. So they would select if it's multiple choice. Um, you have the draggables or drawing slides. So all you have to do is click on it and it will add it to your slide. Now, I haven't reformatted this back to the traditional size. So it's a little bit off compared to what it would be um, if we were just in the regular Google Slides format, but this is still in that eight and a half by 11 size. Um, so this, they already have things ready made for you and you can go in and click on the text and change what it says. So I think that's really neat. Now, let me get to the whole part. All right, so if we keep going down in our example here, they have a section for littles or for K through two. And I love this one, fill in the missing letter. So you could easily change this with the letters and with the pictures. So let's see what it looks like. And this is a drawing slide. So they could use the drawing tool to write the letter or they could use the text tool to type the letter. And you can change these pictures and the letters here. It's easy for you to go in and edit that. The students will not be able to edit that. They can only draw over the top of the slide. Um, oh, and look at this one. Circle the items that begin with B. So that's the drawing tool as well. So there are a lot of um, templates in here that you could add to your own screen and um, just edit to make it fit what it is you're deciding to do or what you're trying to do. Okay, so they could use the drawing tool on their side to go in and circle the items that begin with B. Um, they have several other ones. So I just encourage you to go through and check out everything they have. They have math stuff in here as well. 
All right, so here's our, um, so we've talked about Google Slides with Pear Deck. We only have a minute left. Um, you can also do the same with Nearpod. Here's this tool. I'm not going to go through it, but we do have some um, tutorials on the handout that you'll get. So you can add the lesson to Google Slides or create a new one in Nearpod. Um, the great thing about this is once you create your own, you can send the link to your teacher friends and they can use the same one for their classroom. And like Pear Deck, Nearpod can be used live or it can be used in a student paced mode. Um, and the final tool is using Google Forms for quizzes. Um, and what I love about that is it is self grading um, and you can add images to the to your answer choices and to your questions. Um, I go I have a tutorial that I created and linked to the handout that you'll get today at the end of our session that that walks you through the steps for how to do that. And so those are some tools that you can use for independent practice and for having some assessments for your students. Um, another quiz app that I like um, that I use with my students for just some practice quizzing and they can do it unlimited or you can sign for homework is uh, quizzes. Um, it's Q U I Z Z or Q U I Z I Z Z. So quizzes and they also have an app and it works on any platform. And I believe I have that in your handout as well. So that's a really fun um, way to do quizzing. And you can do timed quizzing too. And I believe, well, where am I? Let's see. All right, so this is our last little interactive. I'm not gonna ask you guys to do this, but um, you could use the drawing tool to match the tool to what it's used for. It looks like a few people have started using the, the, the drawing tool, okay? 